Keep it rolling with the BYU women's volleyball conversation and do so with the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Year, two-time setter of the year, really an all-timer at this point, uh, and she's got more work to do. Whitney Bauer of BYU women's volleyball is on BYU Sports Nation. Welcome back to the show, Whitney. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what year you are because of the whole COVID scramble. I like, know. Like, I where are you in school and where are you in your eligibility? Okay, senior school, and then I have two more years with volleyball. So this year and then next year. You have two more years two of more eligibility, years. Yep. but you're already a senior uh -huh. academically. Yes, yep. Thank you, COVID. I guess there are they, some good things that came yep. from COVID. That's great right? news for your coach. <laughs> That's great news for your coach that you, have, that you have two years. Everyone thinks you're the best player. Um, the league certainly does, and, uh, and history has shown that, that you're a spectacular setter. What's the key to setting the ball for your teammates? Things Ooh. are going on, and, and you're the quarterback. What are, you, uh -huh. what are you thinking about? Oh, man, all kudos to my passers, though, really, because it all starts with the pass. I mean, my volleyball players know it, but it starts with the pass, and it ends with a hitter, so I get the easy job. I'm just the middle man. <laughs> the, easy, the easy job? That's one way to look at it. Okay, but to your point, yeah, servers, if you talk to every volleyball coach in the history of the game yep. across America, it's like, what's the key to tonight's match? Serve, serve receive. receive. Serve yeah. receive will be in that answer yep. somewhere. Um, and... Uh, and I almost hate to bring it up, but in the NCAA tournament, it got a little shaky there. Right, right. In the right. Sweet 16 match. Yes. So what do you do to shore things up like that um, after an emotional loss like that and then an, a long offseason? How, do you, how yeah. do you prepare yourself for Sweet 16 teams and mm -hmm. opponents and the serve receive that goes along with that? Right. I mean, it's a lot of pressure. And I, as a, I'm not a passer, so I don't really know that aspect. But, I mean, after that, that Sweet 16 game, I just kind of forgot about it. But... Now we're back, you know, we're trying to just take the bull by the horns and we're, we're working on our passing and we're focusing on it. And we're, you know, it's something that we're working on and um, it's definitely something in our control. So we're yeah. hoping that it skips better this year. What <laughs> can you tell us about the passing? Because you're receiving yeah. it, like you said. Well, yeah. you can tell us from your perspective, how has the passing been? Right, well, the cool thing about this team is everyone works so hard. So everyone's just willing to get better and we got some new faces and um, everyone just wants to get better. And so personally, from my eyes, I think it's gotten a lot better. So mm. I think it's, it'll be exciting this year. This is a program that's built for expectation, and the expectation mm -hmm. is that you'll win the league again and, and be a contender mm -hmm. in, the, in the country, and that seems to be just fine with you, right? Yeah. If they weren't expected, <laughs> if that wasn't what was coming in preseason, be going, hey, you forget about us? Yeah. So when, when you see that, does mm -hmm. it create more pressure, or does it go, hey, that's what we're all about here? Yeah. I, I think there's a little bit of pressure to it, you know, being ranked number one in the West Coast and being on the first team. But, you know, I think pressure is a privilege, and I think, I think in the end I think pressure is a good thing, and I think it will make us better. Um, but, you know, we just got to approach every single practice and every single match, you know, with the growth mindset and just wanting to get better every single time. Um, I think we've been doing a good job of that so far, and, you know, who cares that we're number one, but we're going to go out and, you know, just take every single game like it's the national championship game. So, um, you know, we just have a growth mindset. We just want to get better. All right, uh, yeah, top 10 team, uh, number nine in the national rankings. Uh, mm -hmm. As we just pointed out, you're picked to win the West Coast Conference again. And the West Coast Conference is a good volleyball conference. Yep. Yeah. You face some really nice teams. Um, but your team dynamic and the personnel are obviously different mm -hmm. when you lose the likes of Kenzie Kerber and Taylor Ballard Nixon, among right. others. So how will your team dynamic on the floor be different than what it was last year? Yeah, we, we lost some really, really good players. You know, those are some of the most fun players I've ever played with. But the th I think the cool thing about this team is everyone's just so, so willing to work hard and so willing to adapt. You know, um, during the off season and preseason, that's the time to take you know breaks from volleyball and to go on vacation. But everyone was just on campus and in the weight room, just getting strong and getting physical, and it's really making a difference on the court. Um, you know, first day of practice, everyone's verticals just shot up, and so you know it's just a testament to see you know how hard they're willing to work in the off season, and it's just so cool. When you're at home uh, having Sunday dinner with your family, uh -huh. do, you, do you ever just start talking about, wouldn't it be great to have a, an entire team full of balance? <laughs> I guess that conversation happens occasionally. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. um, you you're know, up to three, yeah. right? Yep, yep. What's that like? Playing with your sisters is like the coolest opportunity ever. I wish everyone could experience, you know, playing with their siblings. And it's something I never want to take for granted. And um, it's cool because they, they know that your strengths and they know your weaknesses and they know when to push you and, you know, when to ease off. And so... I guess it gets a little competitive here and there. You know, I stuffed blocked Eden a couple of practices ooh. ago. And, yeah, ooh. And um, 
things got a little tense at home, but she just told me that she was coming for my fingers the next day. So, <laughs> but it's all good. It's a healthy relationship, and it's something that I just would never want to take for granted. <laughs> a so. healthy relationship. Yep. Yeah, nothing yep. pushes uh, athletes more than than athletes in the family. Yeah, that's that's very true. Isn't that interesting how that how that works out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so for those that aren't familiar with the Bauer sisters, we've talked about you and what you do is a spectacular setter. Mm -hmm. um, how would you explain Morgan's game, and then how would you explain Eden's game? Oh, that's a good question. Morgan, so they play different positions. Mm -hmm. So Morgan's a libero, and Eden's an outside hitter. So I guess that in itself, they're, they're very different. But um, Morgan's scrappy. Morgan's a very, very, very kind person, and so she's like the sweetheart of the team, but she's – um, always just willing to give her give her everything and Eden's just a little fireball like Eden brings so much energy and so they're both kind of the same and they're both kind of different they both bring just great things to the team so will, will there ever be a time where the three of you are on the floor at the same time and has that ever happened uh, three sisters on the floor <laughs> for any BYU women's I don't know like I know we, there's been two there's, there's been yeah, two yeah sure but, but I don't, yeah, I don't know about three, three. That's, that's, that's a trifecta next level. <laughs> that's that's next level and we is really there a scenario where that would that could happen it could happen okay. it could but we'll see we'll see Whitney Bauer is with us on BYU Sports Nation. She's that would be a nightmare for the announcers. <laughs> well, how would Jeremy handle Bauer to Bauer to then, Bauer? Then you call them by their first names. Whitney, <laughs> Yeah, Eden. you have yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, okay, I talked uh, a lot about last season. It was spectacular. Mm -hmm. I mean, it felt like you won every match. You didn't, but it felt like you won basically every match. Um, and you go and it's like, yeah, undefeated in the West Coast Conference. Mm -hmm. How do you, in your mind, what would be an improvement on last season? Because, I mean, look at the record, another Sweet 16 trip, and it's like, well, that's, yeah. that was really good. Right. So in your mind, what would be an improvement on last season? Ooh, personally, I would say, I mean, my job as a setter, you know, to put up good hitable balls to my, to my pins and to my middles and my right sides. And so that's something I'm always just trying to work on, especially in the offseason, is just to make sure my, my tempo is consistent and my location is consistent. Um, and also being an offensive weapon, I think that's something that Heather's been helping me with, too. Um, that's something that I just want to get better at. And, and in the end, it helps our offense, too, because it creates space. And so um, I think both those things are personally that I think I've gotten better at, and I'd still like to get a lot better at that, but something I've gotten better at over the years. <laughs> so, sure. Yeah. Sure. As the team goes, have you circled that next round of the NCAA tournament? Is that a thing? Like, or are you just like, are you totally in the mode where you're like, you're just in coach speak mode. And it's like one match at a time. Right? Yep, yep. That second option right there. All right. Well, let's set the coach uh, speak aside. Let's just put over here for a minute. <laughs> so you got Pittsburgh next week. You had a few games before yeah. then. Pitt, the lone team that beat you last year back there. Mm -hmm. Your season ends on their floor right. in the NCAA tournament back back there. So there, you get all that negative vibe from Pitt, and you get them at home. How eager are you, just as a competitor, to get a shot at Pitt? That's so funny because I, yes, all those emotions as you're talking about, it, they're, they're building up right now. They're building up. But, um, yeah, like he said earlier, it's just one game at a time. Like, I'm not even focused on Pitt right now. You know, we just got to take. Focused on Ryder. Yep. We're just worried about Ryder. And so, um, Ryder and Duke. Yep. I'll maintain those negative feelings for you. You got it. I will you step in. We'll keep them on this show, and then, and then next week we'll be, okay. able, be in okay. a better spot. But so great to have them at the at the Smithfield. Yeah, house. yeah, it'll be exciting. And, yeah. Duke, and Duke tomorrow night. I don't think Duke's been Great early before. season schedule. Yep. Yeah. We're very much looking forward to it and mm -hmm. showing a lot of that on BYU TV. Whitney, mm -hmm. thanks for putting up with our questions. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, Say hi to the whole family. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole Bauer clan. And uh, let's give you some... BYU Sports Nation karma for your opening weekend. Yeah? Yep. You know how it goes. Yep. You come on the show, uh -huh. you get the karma. You get the karma, stuff. I guess. <laughs> it's real. Okay, it's thanks, Whitney. Stuff. Thanks, Whitney. Good luck Thank tomorrow. You. Thank you.